Oh, this is William Robinson with ViralHair.com. Today we're speaking to... Hello everybody, I'm Melissa Allgood and I'm an independent author in the Houston area and I love all things sci-fi, horror, and thriller. Okay, now, you know, nowadays if you go on your streaming channels or some bookstores, thriller, everything's thrown in there. So how do you, even if you're doing separate genres like sci-fi, horror, that kind of thing, do you kind of stink yourself to kind of be seen is in the thriller category, you're still standing somewhere in sci-fi or horror. Yeah, so in a general sense, in all my stories, it's the girl saves the day. Ah. So whether it's my romantic thriller series or my sci-fi series, I mean, as much as I do enjoy men and their company, the girls in my books save the day, they kick the butt. So that's how I would distinguish myself from books like Jason Bourne versus my books. Right. And uh, even with, you know, my sci-fi stuff, I do have male characters in there, but in a general sense, I do have the women saving the day. Right. So, yeah. so is it with so many of the protagonists you have there, like, uh, for example, movies, you got the Ripley character, which Tony Weaver did, yeah. or in comics, you got the Supergirl or Lois Lane figure now kind of being the saving the day types. Yeah. Is it hard sometimes to kind of kind of original way to portray those characters and make them the, the people they are in, the, in your stories? I mean, I would agree that that would be difficult. The thing is, is that you have to make it your own. I'm a strong believer of every story's already been told. Every book I've ever written, some variation of that story's already been told. It's about telling it from my perspective. So, as much as I'd love to write Ripley and make her my character, she would, you know, I'd have to make her a little bit different, obviously. Um, so yeah, I would agree that sometimes that is difficult, and like for instance, I describe my books being similar to Stranger Things and the Umbrella Academy, which are things that people are familiar with, right? and that is very much in the genre, um, but it is about making it your own. For instance, I usually set everything in the Maryland area, in where I'm from, and um, for instance, my sci-fi stuff, they're in 2020, but it's a very reimagined 2020, right. um, anti-COVID, yeah, but uh <laughs> Um, so yeah, it is, it is about making it from your own perspective, which is very difficult to explain really. Um, it's all about telling your own story about things that you want to read about. For instance, with the romantic thriller series, the first book I wrote, I literally just got all my favorite spy tropes and put them in one book. And that was my intention. I really was like, I want a handsome spy and this beautiful lady dancing in a ballroom. So I wrote that scene. Right. And, um... The hard part was coming in and then being like, well, what's, why are they doing these things? But that was the first book I ever wrote, and that's how I did it. Right. So I was like, these are things I wanted to love. And speaking of tropes, yeah. okay, where all the way back in the 80s with uh, Die Hard, mm-hmm. Chris Wills kind of this precedent of a human hero taking care of a lot of things and still being vulnerable somewhere. Yeah. With the push sometimes for some female characters to be... Uh, female equivalent of a guy or Batman or whatever. Yeah. Is it hard to kind of find that pattern where you still find that vulnerability to that character without making her too cookie cutter of other characters? 100%, 100%. You can go too strong or too weak either right. way. I will say that not every reader's happy. Right. I can't make every reader happy with everything. For instance, I do have my female character, she's an assassin, and she is very bloodthirsty, but there is a scene in my first book where she does cry, and I did get a few people that are kind of pushing back on that, and like, well, she's a badass, and she's murdering all these people and doing, you know, repelling off buildings, doing all this cool stuff, and then here she is crying in her in her house, like, what a weirdo, and I do want to make it, yeah, exactly, I do want to make her a full character. I want all my characters to have good and bad, and... Even if I can't make every reader happy by making a Terminator woman, you know, right. in a sense, those, those, that's out there. You can find that, or you can create that on your own. Right. So, but well, I... Well, yeah. well, the reason I, I kind of surprised a minute ago yeah. is because with the advent of characters like the Black Widow, for example, Mark yeah. Phillips, and that was, you know, a few scenes, you got this person just kicking people in the head and they fall. Yes. And then showing these minutes of extreme vulnerability exactly. and snapping out of it and going back to work. Correct. So I'm kind of surprised because with that out there so much, I'm surprised someone would take what you would take that person back a bit because you're kind of, even though it's your own character, you're kind of going along with what culture is kind of showing right now. Correct. In the films. So yeah. That, yeah. that surprised me. Yeah, I mean, I've gotten 
Well, also, when I first got out, I was writing in the spy thriller, and I was one of the few women that I knew in the independent author realm. And there were a few people that told me their feedback was, well, I can tell this book was written by a woman. And I wasn't sure if that was a compliment or not, but I can only go writing what I want to read and what I can support. And I think that a full and deep character that has highs and lows and likes and dislikes is really important. Right, because as a writer, your voice should be the one that comes, not anybody else's. Correct, correct. Yeah, yeah. And um, do you think sometimes also, as someone who's an independent author, and you're in an age where you've seen the transition and the full digital social media happening going on, do you sometimes feel that it's become very easy for someone to read the back of a book, create an opinion on it, and then tell the author what they're doing wrong, even though they've never read any of the other books? That you are 100%, 100%. I mean, it is, you're right, very on track. It is very much in our society now where, I mean, I'm on TikTok too much. But after about 30 seconds, even less sometimes, even maybe five seconds, you're making an opinion. And that is, you're absolutely correct. It is very much in our society. And that's going to happen. And there are going to be people that read the book, read the back cover, and they're like thinking about it one way. Um, And that's, you can't really stop that from happening. And you just have to kind of accept it. For instance, I have what I call a fan. He's one of my greatest supporters and he loved my spy thriller series. But then when I sent him to be a beta reader for my sci-fi book, he told me, he's like, honestly, it reminds me too much of Stephen King, too much of Stranger Things. I don't really care for it. And I was like, well, I'm really sorry they don't care for it. And I just won't bombard you with it. But I was like, but that's exactly what I want people to feel when they read the book. Right. So, so he's telling you the genre parts, he's not a fan of, but you as a writer, he's still a fan of. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's just kind of how you, that can happen with anything and anybody. Right. Yeah. That's more honest then. Correct. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, if someone wants to read the back of the book or just look at something, you know, flippantly and make a, you know, make an accusation or make a belief or have a belief about it, you know, I mean, that's everyone's right. And also, once I write the book and once I publish it, it's not really mine anymore. Whenever, whenever someone's reading the pages and interpreting it, right. then it's their, just like with music. Right. Um, I mean... People can hear the same song and then get three or four different experiences from it. And that's how I have to remind myself. I've already published the book. If you read it and you interpret it one way, um, for instance, my young adult novel, when I wrote it, there's a secondary character that's just kind of like a foil. I didn't really think too much about it. But when I get teenagers that read this book, this particular secondary character, I got a lot of teenagers that said, thank you so much for writing a gay character. And I was like a little shocked because I was like, I... I don't think he's gay. I, he just exists. But the feedback from these teenagers... The interpretation is what... Correct. That was right. their interpretation. And I was like, blessed be. You know, if that's how... If you... If that's what you think, that's great. That's you reading the book. You know, and I can relate, actually. Uh, an audio drama I did, I gave someone a scholars last night. When the, when the biography I explained this person is... Uh, uh, as a Creole parent and a Scottish parent. But yeah. they lean hard into... So then I'm writing the rest of my series with this guy with Scottish accent because yeah. this thing. So their interpretation translated into an audio format that, like, okay, yeah. um, kind of hijacked it because it's cool. Uh-huh. So the fact that you have this connection with your readers, if they say your interpretation is just, we love this, it's so awesome because that shows good communication with your audience. They, they know you. Yeah. And kind of, like you said, uh, it's one of your ears. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, yeah. You've, you've done spy thriller and sci-fi and horror. Is there a genre you're ready to play with and see what you can do with it yet? I mean, there is... I've never written a full horror novel. Okay. I've written... Uh, I have a collection of short stories that are all horror. But I have always in the back of my head, like, wanted to write um, the ultimate haunted house book. <laughs> so, and again, much like with my spy thriller, with that horror novel... I want to have all the classic horror tropes that I personally love. Um, so that's why I thought I'd get stick a bunch of people in a haunted house and then, I mean, kill them in really interesting ways via ghosts or maybe the house itself or something. Um, I've kind of thought about that, but I have yet to really tackle that because it's not clear enough in my head. Yeah, and then you got to avoid copy and paste from Amityville Except and Rose Red and all those things. 100%. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... I mean, for instance, when I was writing the spy thriller, people kept saying, they're like, wow, have you seen Alias? And I was like, I've never seen an episode. Um, 
because you don't want to pull from that directly. Exactly. Yeah. So I tend to, when I am writing in a certain genre, I tend to watch and read stuff in the opposite genre. Um, so even though I'm a huge fan of Stranger Things, when I'm writing the sci-fi stuff, I'm honestly watching The Walking Dead. Um, I tend to get all my horror, um, you know, reading and uh, watching on. And then conversely, when I wrote my uh, young adult novel, I was watching Sons of Anarchy. Um, <laughs> and uh, my young adult novel in particular is very innocent, a very classic coming of age tale. But I was watching something very violent and insane. Right. But that was that was uh, I meant to do that. Obviously. Right. Yeah. You're trying to have correct. Keeps that filter. Correct. Correct. Right. Yeah. And also. In that vein, if there is something popular coming out, like I, I'm honestly not watching a lot of Marvel right now because I am writing similar characters to that. Right. So I don't want to be influenced, and um, I don't watch a lot of the new Star Wars because I also don't want to be influenced by that kind of stuff right. too. Right. Uh, so have you gone to a few cons? Yes, since? I've been so blessed. Okay. Yeah. What it was the weirdest so far, and also the best experiences you've had so far coming to a convention. I think the weirdest, man, that's a, that's a tough one. Um, the weirdest is when people come up and they, like, already know me. Um, because I am quite transparent. I have to be very open right. with, you know, here's how you find me and, you know, yada, yada, yada. And here's my, what, what I think about when I'm writing. So it's strange when people come up and they're like, oh, my gosh, how's your cat doing? And and stuff like that. And right. also I'm a hairdresser, so I have, I have to be open about that, too. Um, but I think probably the most welcoming is meeting young people, especially that are like aspiring writers, and you see the little glint in their eye, and um, you want to propel them to, you know, break the barriers and write their own story, and that's really always the greatest thing is when you read, when you get the chance to meet anyone that uh, wants to do something cool like that. Yeah. Thank you for your time, Oh, thank you so much. It was great.